Hello all, welcome to the microwave and radar engineering subject. In the lecture one, the learning outcomes are to memorize the main components of the electromagnetic waves, list the various applications of electromagnetic waves along the frequency spectrum, and understand the reason behind studying microwaves. So what is an electromagnetic wave? Have you ever encountered an electromagnetic wave? The answer is yes. If you ever turned it to listen to a radio or turned on the lights or have an X-ray or felt the warmth of the sun on your skins, then that is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. This electromagnetic wave is nothing but a combination of an electric field and a magnetic field. These electric and the magnetic fields are perpendicular to the each other and also to the direction of the propagation. These waves does not require any medium. They can even travel through the vacuum or through the outer space. So look at this diagram. You will find here two waves, one in red color, another in the blue color, traveling along the di one direction. In the direction, we call it as, uh, let us say, Z direction. And if you look here clearly, you will notice that this blue color named here as the magnetic fields are in the X plane whereas this red color waves, that is electric field, in the Y plane. And the direction of the propagation, as I said, is in the Z direction. So these three are mutually perpendicular to each other, or we can call them as the transverse waves. They travel through empty space as vibrations in the electric and the magnetic fields, shown here with the arrows. So if we arrange the electromagnetic waves in the order of their increasing frequency, we will find the longest wavelength corresponds to the radio waves, then next comes the microwaves, then infrared rays, then visible light, then ultraviolet rays, then X-rays, and the shortest wavelength and highest frequency corresponds to the gamma rays. So if we notice the wavelength in this diagram, you will find that longest wavelength that is intended to cover three meters corresponds to the radio waves, and the shortest wavelength that is intended to cover minus 12 meters corresponds to the gamma rays. So let's first discuss the radio waves. Radio waves, as I said, have the longest wavelength of all the electromagnetic waves. They are often used to transmit data and have been used for all sort of applications, including radio, satellite, radar, and the computer networks. This is uh, magnetic resonance imaging. And as you can see in the diagram, in the, uh, we can see this picture. This, this is short wave radio waves with a magnet to create an image that is very helpful in detecting various diseases. Next is the microwaves, which is our major concern in this subject. They have the shortest wavelength and the highest frequencies of the radio waves. They have wavelengths less than 10 cm. And these cell phones and satellites use microwaves between 1 cm and 10 cm for communication purposes. Microwaves are very useful in communication because they can penetrate the cloud smoke and uh, light rings also. Two major applications of microwaves are one is the microwave ovens. We all use these ovens at our homes to cook food. These waves transfer energy to the water inside the food and causing them to vibrate, which in turn transfers energy in the form of heat to that food. Secondly, these microwaves are used in radar, that is radio detection and sensing. We can see a traffic policeman carrying an equipment which is based on the principle of a radar to determine the frequency, a shift in the frequency for measuring the velocity of the object, the speed of the object. So this is also using the microwaves. Next is the infrared rays. These infrared rays are also named as near infrared or the far infrared. And this is related to the heat that we observe or the warmth we can observe on our skin. Warm objects give off more heat energy than the cool objects. So the energy released by them is in the form of infrared waves. We also found them in the remote controls and to read the CDs, ROM, etc. Strong infrared radiations in certain industries are very harmful and hazardous to the eyes. So we have to use special IR proof goggles uh, in, the, in such places or in such industries. This image captured by the thermal sensor. You can see here the different colors showing the different energies released in the form of the heat by the different objects. Next is the visible light. This is the range of the frequencies that is visible to the human eyes. In the frequency range, it is from 430 to 790 terahertz, and in the wavelength, it is from 390 to 700 nanometers. You can recall now that the longest wavelength corresponds to the red light, and the shortest wavelength corresponds to the purple.
purple or the violet light and when we arrange them in the increasing order of the frequency they are as R O Y G B I V or we can also remember them as a VIB gear which is opposite of it where R stands for the red color or V for the violet color. Next in the range is the ultraviolet waves which are having higher frequencies than the visible region. These ultraviolet waves have the next wavelength or you can say next shortest wavelength after visible light. The wavelengths are from 400 billion to 10 billionth of a meter. These are used in tanning beds and sterilizing equipments. Nowadays these are used for sterilizing the rooms and the equipments to protect the spread of the corona. But too much exposure can also cause skin cancer. You can see the various images of skin cancers. It also causes your skin to produce vitamin D which is good for the teeth and the bones. The next is the X-rays. These have the shorter wavelength and higher frequencies than the ultraviolet rays. They carry a great amount of energy and they can penetrate with the most of the matter. Our bones and teeth absorb the X-rays and that's why these are used to determine the density of the bones. But too much exposure can also cause the cancer. Uh, these X-rays are used by the engineer, especially the civil engineers, to check for tiny cracks in the structure. You can see in the figure that these rays when passed to the structures, uh, get uh, black and white images or you can uh, found these cracks easily in the figures as they appear darker on the film. So next is the gamma waves. These have the shortest wavelength and the higher frequencies than the X-rays. They have the greatest energy associated with them and they can penetrate the most of the objects. These are used in the treatment of the cancer to kill those cancer cells. Uh, if you can recall, the movie Hulk, there is an incredible Hulk in that which was the victim of the gamma radiations. Also these nuclear weapons emit gamma rays which are very harmful for us. As this subject is of microwave and radar, so we are going to discuss these microwave bands in detail. We have further divided our microwave frequency that is from 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz in the different bands. First is the L band from 1 to 2 gigahertz and they have their applications in satellite, GPS, cellular phones. S band is from 2 to 4 gigahertz. They have their applications in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and again in the cellular phone. Like the third one is the C band which is from 4 to 8 gigahertz. We find their applications in satellite and the microwave relays. X band is very important. It is the range of 8 to 12 gigahertz which is used for the radar purposes and similarly the rest of the bands are there up to 170 gigahertz. But the question that remains that why these microwaves are being studied thoroughly and we have a subject microwave and radar engineering, what is the reason behind it? So the answer to this is that whenever we want to transmit any frequency, we need an antenna. So the size of the antenna is very important and we have already known that the size of the antenna is determined by the wavelength given by the lambda by 4. So this is the reason that why we are studying here in the communication purposes because a good antenna size approximation is around lambda by 4. So if this wavelength is smaller, definitely the size of the antenna will be one fourth the size of the wavelength and higher in the frequency range in comparison to the radio waves as microwaves has higher frequency or you can say they have the uh, smallest uh, smaller wavelength, then definitely the antenna size will be reduced. So now next question that arises from here that why don't we use the higher frequencies? There are frequencies above the microwaves also. The reason is that, that they can ionize the objects through which they pass. It means they are very harmful for the human body also. That's why we don't use them. This is the reason that only the microwaves are only suitable for the communication purposes and that's why we are studying them in the communication engineering. So in the summary, we can now memorize the, we have memorized the main components of the electromagnetic waves. We have listed the various application of electromagnetic waves along the frequency spectrum. And we have clearly understood the reason behind studying microwaves. Thank you.